on the agenda is the minutes of the August 24, 2017 regular board meeting. You've all had a chance to review those. Any corrections, additions, or deletions? Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the August 21st regular board meeting? So moved. Moved by Rick. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving those minutes from August 21st, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7-0. Approval of claims number, or I'm sorry, number 11,932 to 12,088, totaling $876,170.91. Any questions? Any deletions? Oh, there they are. Um, the September 1st payroll told $417,805.24. And then the 15th, um, the September 15th payroll total $432,861.55. And then we have um, the funds report. Uh, general funds started with $915,793.78. We had one million twenty-five thousand five hundred and seventy-nine dollars and sixty-three cents worth of receipts. Expenses for the month of August were one million twenty-five thousand four hundred and thirty dollars and fifty-two cents, leaving us an ending balance of nine hundred and fifteen thousand nine hundred and forty-two dollars and eighty-nine cents. For the debt service fund, we started with two million two hundred and ninety-five thousand one hundred and eighty-one dollars and thirty-three cents. We had $9,522.80 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $58,970 and leaving us an ending balance of $2,245,734.13. Expenses for the month in debt service were $58,970 um, because through the 2017 budget, we um, advertised and got permission to um, allocate those funds to our textbook reimbursement, our textbook rental fund. So this is ultimately um, the portion that we did not get um, state assistance from the Department of Education. So we were able to use, um, as we advertised, use um, some of those funds to help offset the difference that we were not able to collect from the state. When it comes to capital projects fund, we started with $761,261.71. We had $18,724.20 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month totaled $97,350.47, leaving us an ending balance of $682,635.44. Um, with CPF, um, something to note and um, take note of with Capital Projects Fund is the fact that we um, received quite a bit of um, Duke Energy rebates that we had um, applied for thanks to uh, Terry Thornsbury and his crew with Meridian. So um, the updates that have been done between the um, high school project and the middle school project and the Columbia project as they are wrapping up those um, projects, they're completing the applications for energy savings rebates uh, because now we have more energy efficient um, HVAC systems and um, Duke rewards us for that in an effort to save and conserve electricity and resources. So um, those funds went to capital projects since we paid more <coughs> utilities from capital projects. Moving on to transportation fund, we started with $1,188,384.72. We had $2,240.66 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month were $34,958.06, leaving us an ending balance of $1,155,667.32. Um, much status quo going on in transportation. Last but not least is bus replacement fund. We started with $360,871.80. We had $610.62 worth of receipts. No expenses for the month, leaving us an ending balance of $361,482.42. And we'll move to the rest, which I believe that was it. 
Any questions? Is there any objection to approving approval of claims, payrolls, and funds report as one motion? In that case, is there a motion to approve the approval of claims 11,932 to 12,088, payrolls, and the funds report? So moved. Move, made by, motion made by Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the financial report, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> this time, is there a motion to recess the board meeting because we're going to have the open public hearing <coughs> on the proposed budget for 2018? I move to recess the board meeting for the hearing. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of uh, recessing the board meeting, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. In that case, we are going to open the public hearing on the proposed budget for 2018. So this is our official 2018 um, budget hearing. Um, what we're going to do is um, review um, all of the funds and everything going on in them that we're anticipating for 2018. Um, some of this has been reviewed, reviewed before, um, so my apologies for sounding like a robot, but my goal is to make it exciting each and every time <laughs> that we go through it. So any questions, feel free to you know, raise your hand, ask, inquire. This is a public hearing, so it's, um, this, is, this is our budget. This is not just our budget. Um, as a community, we have some collaborative impact on it. So um, some updates that we're um, looking at going down the pike is um, Senate Enrolled Act 321, um, which gets us more um, information out quicker. So that changes uh, quite a bit of um, how the Department of Local Government and Finance um, operates. So what that means is that a lot of their deadlines um, moved forward and then that now they have to have more information out um, in order for us to have and be able to build a more accurate 2018 budget. Let's see. Moving on to the next slide. Another thing that is um, changing and will change um, that is very important to keep track of is, <coughs> and in essence, you know, how public funds and how school funding works. So a few minutes ago, you just heard me um, go through all five of the funds the general fund, the debt service fund, the capital projects fund, our transportation and our bus replacement. So those five funds through House Enrolled Act 1009, um, starting in 2019, will go from five funds to three. So obviously, as, you, as I start on the right, debt service will continue to be its own silo. And then the capital projects, transportation and bus replacement will go into the operations. Now mind you, when when I say operations, that's everything of what it takes for a school organization to run. Um, education on the left is just solely education. That's teachers, that's anything directly related, related to you know, school supplies, what are, what are needed, or what is needed, my apologies, to, um, to educate kiddos, um, simply put. Um, as you can see, general fund has two arrows, one that goes to education, one that goes to operations. So what that means is some of the money that we pay in general fund is essentially custodial staff and it's custodial supplies and things like that. So we're able to you know, pay for those out of the operations um, and as we get closer to 2019, uh, more language will be learned and decided upon of how we move forward and, and have enough money to pay for those custodial things that used to be paid for out of the general fund into the operations fund. So right now, there are detailed spreadsheets that mm -hmm. Val and Julie and Brenda are working on that we are looking at each month to track specifically what's coming out of the general fund that we would be able to support at a later date so that we'll be able to um, have accurate accounting. Um, We haven't separated them yet, but we're starting to track them in a different process. Process. Exactly, it's a process. So 2018 budget calendar, um, back in August on the 22nd, we um, had a notice of public hearing to, um, it did appear in Gateway, our bus replacement and CPF plans um, did appear, they um, were published in the Rochester Sentinel. Um, today, we obviously have our public hearing, um, and then next month on the 16th, we'll have our budget adoption. 
Um, and then following the budget adoption, then the um, adopted CPF plan will be provided again to the Sentinel for publishing for public comments. <coughs> and then the deadline is November 1st that we have to have our 2018 budget um, into Gateway. And Gateway essentially, there's a link on our on our website, www.zebras.net that you can go on and you can view a multitude, every state um, organization in the state of Indiana, I mean, every city, town, school, has to provide their budget to the Gateway website. So if you um, want to compare um, your property taxes to another county, you're more than welcome to, um, and Gateway was created for that purpose. So essentially on this slide is a comparison, it's a year-over-year -year comparison of um, where our funds have ended at the end of the year, the calendar year. Um, and this is, again, it's on our website, it's on board docs, it's up for public knowledge of how are we doing, where are our opportunities, you know, some years we have more costs than others, and some years we land um, elsewhere in comparison. So. Um, as, as a whole, this is a, a cumulative, really good side-by-side -side to kind of do a checkup and, and see how how we're progressing along for, for long-term stability. And Val, when you're looking at that, those are for those five months of the total. Exactly. We've been blessed to be able to do some major construction projects. That's not included exactly. in that because exactly. it's a separate. Yep, all of our construction projects are in um, a different fund, <coughs> and we also have um, our rainy day is not listed on here either. So, 2017 budget review um, has some um, Rochester Community School Corporation assessed valuation over the past few years is provided on there as well. Um, and then how much we've received in tax levies. So it has last year for 2016 tax levies, that's essentially our revenue. That's from um, our awesome you know, taxpayers here in the county paying taxes. And so there's a comparative of how much um, we received from 2016 to 2017. Mind you, we're still in 2017, but this is what um, the 2017 numbers that are listed on here is what we've been told by the Department of Government and Local Finance of how much we will receive for the full calendar year. <coughs> and so we're gonna start with rainy day. We advertise um, our rainy day as a part of our budget in the event that we might need to tap into that and use some of those monies next year. It's a lot easier to include this with our budget advertising for this year fact of um, um, the permissions that we obtain by advertising and including that in our budget. So when I say, I might say appropriations down the way throughout my presentation, appropriations are the permission to use um, those funds um, as, as our budget is adopted. So currently right now we have $119,418 in our rainy day um, and so we're advertising that if the need arises down the road then um, that is how much we might need to use. Um, expected uh, projected revenues are zero. Um, I uh, prefer the that it's a, it's a status quo. If the opportunity arises that we can move money into rainy day and it benefits us, um, there's no downfall of, of moving money, but this is a worst case scenario of um, if we don't, then at least this is um, advertised in with our budget. Moving on to our general fund, which is primarily funded through our state tuition support from the state, that um, here's a comparative of year over year um, enrollment um, based upon how many kiddos are um, enrolled in the school that we get to educate um, is, is how the, our funding is, is driven. So 2013-14 um, we had 1,760 and then in 14-15 we grew quite a bit. Um, and then 16-17 um, we were down a little bit. Well we were still growing but because of the way that the formula was calculated we did lose um, 168,000 and so um, 
every biennium, the, the funding formula is re-evaluated. It's a very big deal um, because we can even, as you can see, we can even grow kiddos, but yet the way that the calculation is determined, um, we could still lose money. So general fund projected revenues are a total of $12,330,864. Um, we just had our official count day, um, so back on Friday, September 15th. So right now we're in the window where um, we're making sure that every student that is enrolled within here within Rochester Community School Corporation um, is you know, they are counted on our roster. Sometimes if um, students transfer in or out of another district, some schools might um, might count them as well. So there's a cleanup period that's happening right now. So as soon as we have that cleanup period finalized, then um, our, our um, general fund that we receive will be updated to reflect those September 15th um, actual numbers. Oh, and just a real quick thing, they don't actually have to be physically present, so if they're out sick on September 15th, but they are enrolled, they'll still be counted. I just wanted to make sure that was clear across the board, too. So, um, next two pages, or next two slides, are our projected expenditures. Um, and this is on a, um, the program represents um, each aspect of our what is it, for lack of a better word, is department. So 11100 is primary, secondary, when I say primary, I mean like elementary school, middle school, high school, salary benefits, supplies, and then we have a multitude of other programs, as you can see, of different aspects, you know, counseling, for instance, custodials or in your library as well, has its own program. And this is what we're anticipating to spend for 2018 and obviously if it just like as we follow and watch and as I make sure that you know with the cash flows is that we're all on the same page of uh, making sure our expenditures do line up with our revenues and that we obviously don't oversee or overstep our boundaries and that we stay healthy and we stay fiscally responsible <clears throat> so general fund budgetary updates, um, open enrollment um, was just completed for health insurance. Um, the corporation contribution to the health insurance plans absorbed the 2% increase, so that means that our employees are um, don't have to pay any more for health insurance, which is a blessing. Um, and then the 2017-18 certified teacher contract schedule, there's, you have to keep in mind, there's 10 payrolls of the 1718 contract schedule that are in 2017, and then there's 16 payrolls in 18. So it's another moving target of, you know, um, anticipating what those 10 payrolls in 2018 are gonna look like as well. So there's a lot of communication that goes on behind the scenes. Moving on to debt service fund, um, we're anticipating $3,906,372 worth of tax revenues. <coughs> what we're budgeting for. And then here are expenditure breakdowns. We have um, different bond principles, bond interests, and some registrar fees. And then here, again, is that unreversed textbook um, that we're budgeting for as well so that uh, we can still operate our textbook service, I'm sorry, our textbook rental fund um, even, even with that difference um, in what we don't receive from the state assistance. Capital Projects Fund, here are projected revenues of $1,814,244. Breakdown, again, similar to, cap, or similar to the general fund, the Capital Projects Fund has a few different departments. We have, a, of course, our technology department is paid for through the Capital Projects Fund. Um, our maintenance of, in buildings, our upkeep, um, we pay for our uh, some of our insurance out of the Capital Projects Fund, as well as um, a percentage of the sports facilities are able to be paid for through the Capital Projects Fund due to um, an Indiana state statute that allows a, a specific percentage. Um, and then also purchase of mobile and fixed equipment. Um, and that consists of um, the a variety of things. One of those is um, on the top of my head are the projectors in the screen, some of the smart boards 
and things as they you know go through their life stages um, we pay for them to be um, replaced through the capital projects fund next is transportation fund we're anticipating nine hundred and twenty one thousand eight hundred and twelve dollars through uh, tax revenues here's a breakdown of um, how much we're anticipating to spend for each of those areas so essentially transportation fund pays for everything in regards to getting the kiddos from home uh, from from home to school and school to home except for the bus so that's the fuel that's the bus drivers that's um, equipment on the bus if it needs replaced um, and, and anything concerning concerning the buses as well as our transportation director and and, um, and secretary as well Last but not least is bus replacement fund. So of course, this is the actual purchase of the bus. Um, for 2018, we have three buses that are in the bus replacement plan, and we're anticipating them to come in at um, getting ahead of myself, $360,000. So, oh, and then the one more slide is the bus replacement plan is. This is available for public view at our central office across the street. Same with our capital projects fund plan. Um, it is uh, by statute that we have to make it available and this is by no means an easy way to view it. So um, if you ever wanna stop in and see it, feel free to stop in. Um, the office is open 7.30 to four. Um, and then it was advertised in the Rochester Sentinel as well too. Any questions? So the next step is, um, you know, feel free to call or email with questions, um, and then I'll apply that uh, feedback, to, you know, you know, obtained towards the 2018 budget, um, and then from there, once the budget is approved and adopted in October, that'll get uploaded to Gateway, um, and then the notice to, or, I'm sorry, I'm looking at that and my, my needs updated. Um, so in October, after the budget is approved and adopted, then it'll be put through to Gateway, and then on Gateway, you'll be able to see um, our final approved and adopted budget, and as well compare it to the other school corporations as well. Um, And then it says we're supposed to go ahead and submit a motion, but first we're going to go with it. Are there any public comments? I'd rather do that before we take a vote. Anybody from? No. No, but this is just a resolution to. This so is just a public hearing. Here's just presenting. You're here today, then you consider it for a month, then you're able to vote. I had public comments after that, so I'm right. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the 2018 budget as presented? No. No. That's what you do next. We're gonna, we're gonna close the take, hearing. take public comments, then close close the public hearing. Is there any comments from the public on the 2018 budget? <laughs> In that case, is there a motion motion to close the <laughs> motion by Sandy? Second by Steve. All in favor of closing the hearing? Rick. I, I'm not telling you to vote. Vote so, <laughs> carry seven zero. Um, is there a we've already closed the public hearing? Is there a motion to resume the board meeting? Stacy made the motion to resume the public board meeting or the board meeting. Second, second, second by Tom. All in favor? Seven zero. Let's start the meeting again. Overnight field trip. Justin Pearson has um, requested two overnight field trips for FFA. Both are <laughs> annual field trips that they typically go on. Um, to, to my knowledge, never been any problem. It's just an extension of being able to apply what they've learned in class at a greater level and be able to interact with other FFA um, uh, clubs and groups and be able to have that experience coming into um, final speeches, final competitions, those types of things. Adam, I don't know if you have anything you want to add. Um, Is there a motion to approve the overnight FFA field trip? There's so a motion to approve the uh, soil judging field trip and a national FFA conference field trip. 
A motion by Tom. I'll second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the FFA rent field trip soil judging that National FFA Convention signify by raising right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Donations. And we have one donation on here. Is there any other additions? I always look to Candy. She's yeah. so good at that. No. Nope. Rochester Kiwanis Club to the RHS Key Club for $200. As always, no. I want to make sure we say thank you to those people to make those donations because they helped us very much. Very much. Is there a motion to approve the donations as given? So good. Motion second. by Jenny. And you second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the donations as read, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Third reading of various policies. Okay, so the third reading means that if there are no changes when we vote, then these then become policies and they have been available on our website. To just review, we have policy 1662, 3362, 4362, and 5517. They're all related about harassment and um, defining that a little bit clearer. Um, 2411 allows our guidance department to talk about mental health and addiction counseling, um, providing referrals. 2700 is discussion on what um, we want to post for our performance report. This is, there are a bunch of policies that were affected by Senate Enrolled Act 500, which was deemed as kind of a deregulation uh, act. And so in that, we can go back and things that we used to be required to do in policy, now we have a choice whether we want to continue to do that or not, and this is one of them. And um, so it was just if we wanted there's still very there are lots of things we're required to do for our performance report that we must list but we were also given the option to add other scores for instance in WEA scores or parental involvement or those kinds of things and so we um, clarified what we want to have on our performance report 5112 again that's part of that Senate Enrolled Act 500 about early admittance to kindergarten, we are going to keep our appeal process, meaning that we will allow if a student turns um, five after the cutoff date that they can appeal through our process at Columbia to still be in kindergarten. 5130 is a policy for how we would like to handle exit interviews. We wanted to make sure that our guidance counselor was there. Um, exit interviews is when a student withdraws from school. The only person I think now that's required to be there is the guidance counselor in case. It's preferred that the administrator's there too, but if not possible, at least the guidance counselor is there. 751001, um, that's about our corporation physical fitness areas. This one was specifically detailing who can use those if we open them up to the public, and this was most applicable for our pool because we do have open swims that are pool, and we elected to say that anyone can use it you don't have to be a taxpayer in the Rochester school system so you know if your grandkids are visiting and they come to pay for open swim they can pay for open swim just like anybody else policy 8400 is about uh, again from that Senate enrolled act it used to be required where we had to have a safe school committee at each building and now we just need to have one for the corporation and so that is what we have elected to do with representatives from each building, and then if need be, they can pull in other experts from those buildings too. 8420 uh, is again from that Senate Enrolled Act 500 about monthly fire drills. We still need to drew, do a drill every month, but this gives us a little bit more options. We don't have to, we can replace a fire drill with another kind of a drill, I think like so twice. The apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, we, we can detail what kind of drills. Right. <laughs> so, okay, so we're not. <laughs> okay, it's so not me. I don't think, I shouldn't say that. I, I haven't I double checked that. on the internet to see, but no, Thank I think like know. tornado, <laughs> lockdown. Um, so we have, we want to give our administrators uh, more options on when they do those. 9160 is about um, offering reduced rate to school events. Again, this is part of that Senate Enrolled Act 500. We used to be required to have a set number, and we chose to continue to do that because we do have reduced rates um, for our sporting events at different times. I think that's it. Comments? Is 
there a motion to approve the third reading of those policies as listed? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving the policies as stated, please see if I'm raising your hand. Motion carries 7 0. Surplus scrap item for recycling. Oh, I'm sorry, sale. I wrote too far down. Sale of surplus books. Um, Adam Strasser brought to our attention over at the high school there are approximately, I believe, 15 books that you're requesting that we'd be able to sell. Um, some are obsolete, some we no longer offer the program or not, um, and it's current. Uh, we would need those books for the way the program is currently being um, given to the students. So he is asking for uh, permission to sell those 15 books. <coughs> Comments or questions? About this is no bearing on my vote, but I'm just curious what A and P is. A and P. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a market for these books? Uh, Mrs. Baylor knows a guy. Yes. Any questions for Adam? Is there a motion to approve the sale of surplus books? So moved. moved by Steve. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving the sale of surplus books? Motion carries seven zero. Now surplus scrap items for recycling. And this would be a list that Mr. Kessler provided to us. Scott, if you want to talk a little bit about as we continue to. These are older laptops. After we uh, currently replaced the um, uh, laptops with uh, MacBooks. Um, these are older, probably about five to seven years old um, laptops that we have. We also have desktop computers that have been sitting in the back of classrooms. Um, now that everybody has iPads, that it's, we're just kind of removing these out of the classrooms so it actually gives uh, more room in the classrooms. Uh, so um, a lot of this is just extra stuff. Um, things that have probably been collected over the years, of, like the printers have probably been broken down, uh, just old desk phones, different things that have been sitting around that we've just collected over the last few years that have been broken and <coughs> cost too much to fix. So a lot of this stuff is uh, not repairable. Are you selling or just recycling? Uh, probably just recycling. Uh, most of the stuff is, has been uh, damaged or there's, there's issues with a lot of them that so. <coughs> Any other questions for Mr. Kissler? In that case, is there a motion to surplus scrap item for recycling? So moved. Motion by Sandy. Second. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the surplus scrap item for recycling, signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Approval of the 2018 2019 academic calendar. I want to first of all thank everybody who had a voice and input in, in the making of this calendar. This is something that takes a great deal of time. Um, we first of all on the left hand side of that you will see that we really do have to track the IHSAA calendars which helps give starting points and helps drive us through this. Um, from there we try to do a couple of different outlines. We send it through the admin team, who I am confident immediately sends on to the head building uh, bubble secretaries because they um, they just know the ins and outs of calendar better than uh, all of us, myself included. So we really want their voice and opinion. From that, I provided two calendars to Clint and to RCTA, and they provided some really, really good feedback. Um, some of it I was able to adopt. Others, there were just um, some concerns around logistics especially at one time there were about four calendars roaming around the district and there were thoughts about trying to um, take away some time in that fall break time and trying to shorten the year, those types of things. But what you'll see, I believe, is the best reflection of trying to maintain that balanced calendar, the integrity of what the district tried to do within the balanced calendar to provide opportunities for enrichment, for remediation, and also give them some downtime to decompress. 
A couple of changes that are different. Uh, this is actually kind of a culmination of those four that were floating around. As Scott, if you could take it to the top of the second page. On all of um, the calendars that I got back, RCTA provided feedback that coming back on January 2nd and then moving up that end date would be a good, um, uh, I'm sorry, thank you, a good transition. So we did start that earlier. That would uh, allow us, if everything goes as planned and letter uh, treats us kindly, we would be able to end the Friday before um, we move into Memorial Day. The other thing that was suggested at the study session, which I thought was a great idea, is up in February, um, we had uh, thought about, or we actually had the 15th of Friday off as a makeup day. We moved that to the 18th. Um, the 18th is President's Day, and that would allow families who uh, may have the days off of work to be able to be home with their kids if, if in fact, we can get to that point that we can all have that day off at the same time. Um, you'll see that there are still three built-in makeup days. I still firmly believe that there's something to be said for having teachers in front of the classroom engaging those students. We are prepared to do e-learning on other days if we need to. I know that RCTA brought up the idea of taking out all makeup days and um, just having those be e-learning days. And I'll be quite honest, it came down to my not trusting myself. Um, that would be asking me to make a decision on Friday evening about classes on Monday morning and potentially sending uh, devices home on Friday nights with students who don't normally take those devices home, be responsible for that. Um, and I'm just not sure that we're ready for that and that I'm not ready for that and I'm not sure that the meteorologists are quite ready for that. So um, what you'll see is uh, trying to balance those between first and second semester as best we can, stay true to the balance calendar, and, and try to do what's best for students and their families in the community. And thanks to everybody who had a voice in that. It goes around the district for a good eight or ten weeks before we come to the culmination point. Any questions or comments for Jan on that? Jana, with the makeup days, because um, we've done different things in the past. So if I'm reading this one correctly, we have three green makeup days in the spring, if we complete February in the spring, and then after that, all would be e-learning? We would do our best to do e-learning. If it got, if there's there's a lot of research, a lot of data, that once you extend beyond about three or four days of e-learning, you actually start to lose um, academic integrity <coughs> and results. So at that point, it would be setting down and, and trying to make that decision whether or not we want to extend. Um, right now, I believe the standing agreement is three days of e-learning days, so we have about six days. Um, from there, we would have to troubleshoot it and move forward. Okay, so we're not necessarily saying we would cut back into the second week of spring break. No, we're, we're taking those. That's off the out. table. Exactly. Okay. I appreciate the effort to balance the semesters and to, as much as possible, balance the quarters as well. Um, that, like you said, that helps keep the integrity of the balance calendar. Hoping the weather is on our side. Any other comments or questions for Jim? public comment in that case is there a motion to approve the 2018-2019 academic calendar I make a motion moved by Stacy second by Steve all in favor of approving the 2018-2019 academic calendar is given please see me by my raising your right hand motion carries 7-0 Changes to Columbia's report card. Our uh, our report cards, um, and, and I want to just preface this: we're not really changing our report card in terms of the way that we do it or what it looks like. Um, the, the main primary changes that we're having done or that we're uh, proposing is that our first and second grade report cards, with the new adoption of our iReady math program, uh, our scope and sequence has changed. Uh, we are teaching certain standards at different times of the year than we have been over the last five to eight years. So in order to reflect that, we need to do that on our report cards. If you look, you can see our different quarters laid out and you can see the, uh, the math essential skills. Um, so primarily, uh, the changes that we've made are simply 
uh, moving those around so that they are in the correct order so that when we send our report cards home we're not having to put things down like have not tested yet or stuff like that so uh, those are the primary there's no real major changes other than um, shifting some of that combining some of that and um, cleaning it up so that it matches our current math program so that's that's for second and uh, first grade and then kindergarten uh, there are no changes other than just some wording changes but uh, in terms of uh, the math changes those have not changed so that that is what we are proposing you have any questions for Mr. Steiner? Jason, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was no, looking, I looked at I my hard copies that we. I think one of the questions was to, uh, was that it looked like the scale might have changed, and maybe this was just that it's different between first and second grade. That's different between first and second grade. It's not changed. It's been that way, and and they continue to try to keep it that way. So that's, I'll defer to them and. Keep it, keep it as they had it. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Snyder? It just looks a lot cleaner, simpler. It, it is, and, and a lot of that came with a combination of, of standards. You know, we had nine nine standards listed out, and some of the standards are, are easily combinable, counting and things like that, and, and uh, it, it cleans it up quite a bit. So, uh, the, again. Um, we'll, we'll uh, not again, but we will take input as we give these out. Uh, parents obviously give us feedback on um, on our report cards, things that are easy to understand, things that aren't, and we continuously try to update those. But still a standards-based report card, just shifting it around to, to meet our needs. Anything further? In that case, is there a motion to approve changes to Columbia's report card? So moved. Motion by Sandy. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving, approving the changes to Columbia's report, report card. Please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. While I got your attention on the report cards, I wanted to share with you guys a. Uh, these are samples of. Take a look. These are samples of um, a report card that, that we use. There's three different levels here, um, but if you look up at the levels of prompting, uh, with some of our students uh, and in our special needs programs, um, giving percentages um, and using scales like you see on the, the, uh, the report cards that you just approved uh, don't work for some of our kids. Some of our kids don't speak. Some of our kids sign. Some of our kids have other ways of expressing the learning that they're, uh, that they're progressing and making. I just wanted you to see a report card that our special needs program has put together uh, that specifically focuses on those students and their needs. Um, our report cards that you just approved don't work for these kids. These report cards are made individually for students to meet the needs based on their IEPs, based on what their program, the, the setting and the educational setting that we have for them. And if you look at them, uh, I think it's really nice uh, that, that they have taken it. And this is our first year of using these. We're also using them at Riddle. Uh, Riddle has some students that, uh, that, that utilize these as well. And I think it's a, a great way to, uh, to meet the needs of those students uh, and not have them necessarily lumped in with uh, you know, the general uh, report card. So I just wanted to share that with you. And, uh, and these, these, again, are, are made kind of individually for, our, for the, the kids that have, uh, have those needs or maybe uh, have those levels of prompting that you can see up there at the top. So. That was just yeah. for you guys to see. If you have any questions, I feel free to ask. I wanted to make you aware that we do utilize an, another report card, but it's it's an individually made report card based on the needs of those students. So. Hello, Adam's next. The next one's for Adam. I think there's going to be some pretty happy kids if this one passes. <laughs> this is your big moment. High school, <laughs> yeah. Of all things, high school reserve slash, uh, dash painted parking spaces for students. <laughs> Um, had some students express interest in uh, seniors being able to uh, purchase a parking space and then paint, paint the space that personalizes so then that is their parking space for the school year during the school day. So the cost would be $10 and that cost uh, would then cover at the end of the year us to get the materials we need to get those spots back to 
the way the board was started. They will not be repainting, right? No, the students will not be repainting. We will take care of that. This is the level of enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> and the hope is for that this class gets to do it. Yes, we would uh, try to over fall break, get it prepared where the district seniors could have the opportunity to do this. And you've been after, they've been after you for this for a couple of years Yes, now. the students have been asking about this for a couple of years. So um, this year they have been more persistent in asking <laughs> this to happen. So I uh, used a couple of school districts in the area that have already done this to get some information and create um, kind of an outline of how we will make this happen. Is there a particular area where they'll be doing this or just any place on the lot? Uh, we will use the whole lot. There's an area closer to the entrance that I think they would want to utilize the uh, any of the spots they would be able to use. And it's a random drill? Yes, so any student uh, will have a date that they need to pay by and then all those students will be randomly drawn in the order that they get to pay And just seniors? Just seniors, correct. In all seriousness, I do appreciate Adam's willingness to listen to a student and to make that a student center, building a student center school. That means a lot. Questions? questions or comments for Mr. Strasser? I appreciate the level of detail, especially number nine. That it I'm not even thinking about guessing school appropriate. No, well, <laughs> I appreciate that. I think that's necessary. And nine is probably necessary too. If there's snow on the ground, don't park on it yet. <laughs> if yours hasn't been cleared, <laughs> you probably need to be told that. <laughs> it's true. Is there a motion to, I'm sorry, any other comments for Mr. Strasser? Questions? Is there a motion to approve high school reserve painted parking spaces for students? So moved. Second. Motion made by Rick, second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the school reserve painted parking spaces for students and by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. CTA and the Senate and Roll Rack enact 4007. What I'm handing out, Clint, is the affidavit <coughs> that you sent on behalf of our CTA with the numbers. So one of the changes that we need to do this year um, is verify them, um, ask the board to identify RCTA as um, the association that governs the bargaining unit. And so um, what we had to do is working with Val and with Brenda Troyer, Clint and, and Lori, go through first of all the very bottom and uh, verify the number of employees in our bargaining unit and make sure that we had defined those and accurately accounted for the bargaining unit. And then from there, Clint has provided to us in an affidavit the number of um, teachers who are members of the association, and you can see that number there is 86, and that was due on September 15th, which he did provide to us. And so with that being said, based on um, the Senator Mulva Act 407, they are um, well above that 50%, and I think that the board just um, at this time we need to acknowledge them as the association that represents representatives for the so the association and i don't know if you have anything that you want to add or any questions or comments <coughs> is there a motion to approve the cta and senate roll act 4007 affidavit presented by mr Gardner? so we moved by steve second second by sandy all in favor of approving the CTA and Senate Roll Act as given by Mr. Garp, please signify by raising the right hand. Motion carries 7 0. Repair and replace resolution in the fund. <coughs> so, in front is a repair and replace fund resolution that is approved or adopted and approved every five years. And the current one is unlocatable, which doesn't mean it didn't happen, I just can't put my thumb on it. So in an interest to make sure that we're covered um, and um, and that we have this um, resolution and the need, it, if the need ever arises to use the funds that are, that are in the repair and replace fund, um, then this has our I's dotted, our T's crossed, and, and we can move forward from there. So. Uh, essentially, uh, our repair and replace fund 
is governed by the Indiana Code and state statutes on what we can and can't do, and this um, essentially establishes it in the parameters of what we can and can't do. And every five years, we have to renew this. So my apologies about this time next year. We're going to do it and be good for five years, hands down, because this one is only good until December 31st of 18. Questions or comments for them? Is there a motion to approve the repair and replace resolution funds? So moved. Moved by Tom. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the repair and replace resolution funds in the final right hand motion carries 720. Board resolution. I'm going to state publicly right here and now that I have a family member who works for Rochester Boat Company. So as such, I'm going to abstain from any vote to avoid any conflict of interest. And our oath as a board member and our board ethics, we are required to do so. So as a conflict of interest, I'm going to abstain from that vote. The board resolution, there's an action in front of us of censure expressing disapproval of the actions and comments made by Stacy Carby Shingles. The way we'll do this is I will see if there is a motion and if there's a second. Before there is any vote, there will be comment and discourse allowed. Is there any objection to that? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the board resolution of censure expressing disapproval of the actions and comments made by Stacy Carby Shingles? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Is there a second? I second that. Second by Steve. In that case, I will read the resolution of censure and then we will allow public comment and board comment. Whereas section 144.2 of the bylaws of the board entitled board member ethics specifies as follows, a board member should honor the high resp responsibility which his or her membership demands by understanding, B, understanding the basic function of the board member is policy making and not administrative, and by accepting the responsibility of learning to discriminate intelligently between these two functions. D, refusing to play politics in either traditional partisan or in any petty sense. E, representing at all times the entire school community, and F, accepting the responsibility of becoming well informed concerning the duties of board members and the proper functions of public schools. Section 142.4.2 of the bylaws further states that board members should respect his or her relationship with other members of the board by A, recognizing that authority rests only with the board in official meetings and that the individual member has no legal status to bind the board outside of such meetings. B, recognize the integrity of his or her predecessor and associates in the merit of their work. And E, respecting the opinion of others and by graciously confirming to the, conforming to the principle of majority rule. Section 144.2 of the bylaw further states, a board member should maintain desirable relations with the superintendent and schools and his or her staff by A, striving to procure when the vacancy exists, the best professional leader available for the head administrative post and F, Striving to provide adequate safeguards around the superintendent and other staff members to the end that they can live happily and comfortably in the community and just discharge their educational functions on a thoroughly professional basis. Section 144.2 of the bylaws further specifies a board member should meet his or her responsibilities to his or her community by C, insisting all school business transactions be on an open, ethical, and above board basis, and E, refusing to use his or her position on the board in any way whatsoever for personal gain or personal, personal prestige, and refusing to discuss personnel matters on any other confidential business at the board in his or her home, on the street, or in his or her office. On the 30th of May, 2017, an executive session was held concerning a threat of litigation, at which time the board discussed, and sets out the discussion from the executive session for the purposes of background for this resolution. Issues of board member presence in classrooms, the perceptions of evaluation by board members among certain teachers, the appropriate role of board members as policy making, and the allegation by the RCTA that unannounced, unescorted, and too frequent presence in the classroom, in classrooms, is creating a threatening environment. It was specifically discussed with Stacy Carvishinos, a member of the school board, the amount of time that she spent in schools, as well as in the appearance of and perception expressed by school employees that Ms. Carvishinos was observing and attempting to professionally evaluate teachers and staff. On the fifth day of July, 2017, a study session was held and during policy discussions, the board once again discussed the proper roles of board members in the school, the continuing perception of overreach and involvement in administrative and personnel issues, and the importance of following the chain of command and the bylaws, especially with regard to Stacy Carvey Shainholz. The Rochester Community Teachers Association, RCTA, 
Reported to the superintendent and board that on August 12, 2017, Stacy Carby Shaneholz attended a local event and was heard criticizing administrative operations at Columbia Elementary School, discussing the employment resignation of a former employee, discussing the employment duties of a present employee, and promising a rearrangement of administrative staff at Columbia. At a study session held on September 13, 2017, and discussed the policy issues resulted in specific comments by various faculty members and representatives of the RCTA, and Ms. Garvey Shaneholz was given an opportunity to address and, and has responded to the various allegations brought by the RCTA. By this resolution, the board addresses the allegations that there have been violations of the board code of ethics and Ms. Garvey Shaneholz's actions as a member of the school board. It recognizes that, and to express its disapproval of her actions, its commitment to the bylaws of the board, and its commitment to creating a positive relationship between the board, the administration of Rochester Community School Corporation, and the faculty and staff of the Rochester Community School Corporation. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Rochester Community School Corporation, the foregoing recitals are fully incorporated herein by this reference. The board hereby finds that Ms. Carvey Shaneholz, by her comments and actions, has violated the board members' ethics and the bylaws of the board, and has contributed to a weakening of the relationship between the board and the faculty and staff of Rochester Community School Corporation. The board hereby censures its member, Stacy Carvey Shaneholz, for her actions and comments about school matters in violation of the code of ethics, and without authority of the board. It further censures her for stating that she would see that actions will take place that had not been submitted to the board or addressed by the board, interfering with the proper role of the school administrators. The board calls on Ms. Carvey Shaneholz to reaffirm her standing of and commitment to the following, to following the Boatner's Code of Ethics and the bylaws of the board and to abide by those commitments which she has failed to do. The board disassociates itself from the comments that were made by Ms. Carvey Shaneholz in violation of her duties to the Rochester School Corporation. This resolution shall be in full force and effect upon passage and approval by the board and below it has duly passed, adopted, and resolved by the board after the vote. I will also relay to you that I received this morning three emails from community members. I can read those if so requested, or can I just give names saying they were all in support? I have forwarded those to the board members. Should I read those emails or should I forward them to the board members for their perusal? They are public comments, so. Okay. So I will read those. The first one is from Joe Miller, Joe and Brianne Miller, and it states, Mr. Brad Weaver, President, and a Demist Weaver School Board members and RCSC administration. The board members have received all these. I did forward them to them. This letter is regarding the character of Rochester Community School Board member Stacy Carvey Sheenholz. We feel important to know that we, as lifelong members of the Rochester community and parents of four children, two of which are enrolled in RCSC system, believe Stacy to be of strong character and a benefit to the school board, the administration, its teachers, and the students at all four schools. I graduated with Stacy from RHS in 1999. From that time forward, anyone would struggle to find someone with more school spirit and pride than Stacy. She and her husband, Lucas, take on many extracurricular activities such as cheerleading, prom sponsorship, writing the grant for Promise Indiana 529 campaign, and numerous other school activities. All of these activities she had undertaken before she was elected to the board and has continued since. More important to the activities are the genuine compassion, dedication, and care she exhibits to all of RCSC students. We feel blessed that our children are students at RCSC. The faculty and staff have been terrific for our children. We also believe that strong leadership in our school district comes from caring and compassionate individuals who have our students' best interests in mind. In our opinion, Stacy Carvey Shaneholz embodies someone who is compassionate, caring, and committed to the educational excellence of RCSC. And I will go to the next one. And it is from D. Brown. It says, Brad, I'm writing this letter for you to hear my input on a specific school board member, Ms. Stacy Shaneholz. Mrs. Stacy Shaneholz. I would like the board to know what kind of person that she is and how lucky the RH school, RHS school board and RHS school system is to have her. Stacy, the kind of person that always has the best interest of the students' children at heart, to think otherwise is most definitely an opinion of someone that doesn't really know her, hasn't looked into all that. Stacy does for RHS students or someone that may be on a distorted personal vendetta. Stacy has been heavily involved in many student activities and shown her deep support. She goes to events that she has no personal ties to, i.e. a relative of her own, to show her support in many ways. She cheers for them, takes pictures, posts positive social and media items, etc. She doesn't have to be there. She's there because she wants to be there for the kids. She truly loves them and wants success in their lives. 
There are countless events that occur at RHS that Stacy has involvement in because she cares about the kids. Stacy also, along with her husband Lucas, has gone above and beyond to make RHS prom night a fun and memorable night. I would even venture to say that they have used their own funds to the prom and extra to make the prom an extra special event. People that have no regard or love of the kids don't do things like this, but people like Stacy do. We need more of them, not to question them. I am a parent that knows, along with my children, that if we needed Stacy, she would be there. We are not alone. There are many students alive that Stacy has touched with her caring and kindness. Having confidence like that in someone isn't taken lightly. To hear that Stacy may be thought of in a negative manner is very disappointing to me. I truly hope the board considers my view of Stacy. I understand that this is also an opinion, but it is mine and I wanted to voice it. I would be happy to answer any questions that any may have for me. Thank you for taking the time to read this. I hope that it helps shine some light on someone that deserves to be thought of in a positive manner. Thanks again. And that's from D. Brown. The last one is from Ashley Fraunfelder, and it is titled Dr. William and Ashley Fraunfelder. And it says, Dear Rochester School Board members, we are writing this letter in support of our friend Stacy Shainholz. Together we've known Stacy for over 20 years. Stacy has many wonderful qualities. The ones that stand out the most to us are her honesty, loyalty, integrity, and compassion. She is always going above and beyond to help others, especially children. We have a great amount of respect for Stacy. We hope this letter helps you understand what a wonderful person Stacy is. If we can be of further assistance, please feel free to call or email us. Sincerely, Dr. Bill and Ashley Fraunfelder. The first letter was from Joe and Brian Miller, the second from Dee Brown, the third from Dr. Bill and Ashley Fraunfelder. I will open it up to public comment. I will ask that you please keep your comments to around three minutes. We're not going to keep a timer on you. However, we will keep this civil. Is there anybody who would like to go first? I guess I'll go first. Would you please identify yourself for the board? I'm Lisa Greffitt. Mm -hmm. um, I want to bring up a situation to this board. I am Stacy's sister. I'm also one of the owners of the Rochester Boat Company. And I think that a situation needs to be brought to the attention of this board that might have started all of this. So prior to April 30th, Stacy Carvey Shanels and our family never had an issue with Plank Guard. I feel that we have an issue in our business that occurred on April 30th with Plank Guard's stepson no longer working for us that started this issue with Stacy at the schools. In my opinion, I feel this was retaliation. On May 2nd, Jana Vance asked Stacy to come see her. This is when Vance notified Stacy that Clint Guard had advised her that Stacy was in the school too much. It is in my opinion that she had no issue with Clint Guard prior to this, but now since I have let his stepson no longer work for us, this is when all these issues arise. I also have another issue when it comes to Clint Guard as a teacher and a coach that I have been advised from our legal counsel today that needs to be brought up in a personnel session that also I think affects this decision today, but I've been counseled that it needs to be in the private session from his actions. Would anybody else from the public like to comment? I was with Stacy. Certainly, would you please state your name? Um, Ashton Apples here. Oh, Anya McKee. Thank you. I know who you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was with Stacy on the night at Shambled Tears. I believe it was August 12th. Am I correct on my date? August 12th was the date of the alleged allegation. Correct? Yes. At no time did she conduct herself unprofessionally, inappropriately. Um, she was accused of following staff members around. At no time did she do this. Um, when we left, we, we rode in the same car. We left together. And so there are several non factual events listed. Any other public comments? Please, sir. Sean McKee. I was the driver that night. So, I mean, we all sat there as a family at the, at the concert. We let, we all, like, like Morris said, we left all at the same time. We had uh, personal business and some business to deal with after the events. You know, so, I mean, she. We left as soon as it was over. So, I mean, there was, a, you know, what she's accused of, I don't see how it happened. Any other public comment? Yes, ma'am. Kay Herman. 
I'm sorry, I'm dead, can't hear very well. Kay Herman. Kay Herman, thank you. Uh -huh. um, I was also there that night at a table beside theirs. I did not see Stacy up roaming around, and I saw them leave before we did. So I don't know what the issue is there, but I do want you to know I have seen Stacy take kids to school. She's bought them clothes for things for school. She's fed kids. She's helped them with scholarships. She's helped them with homework. She's ran kids. I even saw her take her home and her money and give a senior a graduation party that could not afford it. And yes, she goes to the grade schools and helps. She's always been in Jack's class helping each and every year to make his life better, to make the class's life better. She, she is a teaching, she has a teaching degree, so I think she's very qualified to help in the classrooms. And, and I think we're missing the point. Stacy's here for the kids. She's here for the school to make it better. She's helped get scholarships for the school. She's helped <coughs> with the program for getting the uniforms and things, that, that fun for the school. Um, she's really a great asset if you would use her in the right directions because she has a lot of knowledge in that. But it seems like we're singling out, I, I don't know, certain things, but yet in the newspaper a few weeks ago, the ex-coach says he was threatened by a board member. Did we, did we have issues with that? Was anybody wrote up for that? I don't understand why we're picking on her. I think she tries to do the best for the school and the best for the kids. You guys are lucky to have her. Any other public comment? Mr. Gard? Yeah, Clint Gard, um, in regard to Drew working at the boat company, um, he did work there for a short period of time. Uh, my understanding is that he uh, had told Lisa that he was going to work a certain day, um, and then he did not show up. Uh, his reasoning was different from her reasoning. Um, she let Drew go. And as I told her on the phone that day, if he didn't hold his end of the bargain, then that's on him. Um, I, him working at the boat company or not working at the boat company, you know, is probably a good thing based on his schedule. Um, it's disheartening and, and I'm disappointed that they bring Drew into it. Um, Drew has nothing to do with it. And now this will be on our RTC and you know uh, which is fine I mean Drew's a big way to handle it I can handle it as well but um, I mean I, Drew as I like to say made his bed and he lost out so I, anybody that knows me knows I hold my kids accountable I have actually no problem with with the decision of her to let him go um, as far as the other issue, I have no idea what. I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. So I don't know of any other. Any other public comment? More comment, uh, Mr. President. In light of this new information, I would suggest we table until we gather more information. Uh, we had a meeting on Wednesday and just had one letter. Uh, important decision like this, we need all the facts. So that would be my suggestion to table. Is there any objection to, well, is if there's a motion to do that, feel free to offer that, Mr. Schwenk. I'll make the motion to table. Motion to table this resolution made by Mr. Schwenk. Is there a second? A second. Second by Mrs. Smith. All in favor of once again I am going to stay out I'm going to abstain because I do have a immediate family member that works for the boat company all in favor of tabling this resolution resolution please signify by raising your right hand I felt that I could not vote because it would be a violation of the conduct of ethics so I stepped aside that is your decision as a board member you are going to abstain all in favor of approving the motion of tabling the uh, resolution, please signify by raising your right hand. One, two, three. All opposed to tabling the resolution, please signify by raising your right hand. One, two. Motion carries three to two that the resolution is tabled for the time being. I'm sorry. 
It will be until the next meeting. Until the next meeting. Yeah. Three, three out of seven, it failed. So, so the extensions don't extensions. count. So then it this is not. By. This is not a motion that requires constitutional majority. I'll see you. Okay. So was it handled properly? Yes. Okay. Then it will be revisited at the next meeting. And I'm not looking at you for affirmation. I'm looking at you to make sure we're following proper procedure. On this. In that case, next up is a personnel report. Uh, let's see, there are two here. So bear with me. The first one is hiring Mrs. Robert Riddle for, bless you, for Riddle Temporary Fourth Grade Teacher and Kate Widener for Riddle Instructional Assistant. There's also an addition for fall intercession by Mr. Haas, Tammy Paul, Chris Cox as intercession recommendation instructional assistants would be Ashley Geller and Joanna T. Walt. T. Walt, and fall enrichment trip coordinator Patty Moore. And I believe there's a recommendation, but I don't know that that needs to be read. So, is there any comments or questions of either Mr. Haas or Mr. Bernacchi? I think there's the only two in there. This afternoon, the fall intercession was added. Is that here? Okay. Yeah, you. I got that right. Yeah. Any questions or comments of Mr. Haas or Mr. Bernanke? In that case, is there a motion to approve the personnel report as given? So moved. Motion by Sandy. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of appro approving the Excuse me, I'm writing this down. All in favor of approving the personnel report is given. Please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Superintendent's business. Today I um, had the opportunity to spend down at IMLEA um, where Rochester Middle School is again um, recognized for being a school to watch. Um, our choir was able to travel there with Lisa McMillan and Hope Shally performing in front of about 300 people. It was quite an honor. Rochester Middle School had a team who did a presentation that was well attended. So I just want to thank them for their hard work and dedication to the students there at the middle school. Um, the next time we meet, fall break will have happened, so we will have had enrichment as well as remediation. So as the nine weeks is winding down, if you have students who um, you feel you want to um, enroll those in the enrichment opportunity or, and or the remediation opportunity, please make sure that you reach out to principals and counselors of respective buildings. And then also our generator went on sale today online and um, will continue to be online through September 28th at 4 p.m. So if that's something you're interested in, we've got the information on the website as well as um, would entertain if you'd like to make a, an appointment to come in and see that generator, we would be um, very open to having you come in and look at that and see what it is exactly that you're bidding on. And other than that, is there any other business for the good of your work? Brad, I do. I just wanted sure. to circle back to this report card that Mr. Snyder shared with us. And I just, I, I'm so encouraged because that is part of our mission is to learn, grow, and give. And to be able to authentically <coughs> assess growth in each of our students. I know we're doing that in many ways, but thank you for sharing this to show that. Any other business for the good of the order? Any public comment? We're going to Thistleberry Farms on uh, October 5th. Thistleberry Farms. Farms. Thistleberry Farms <laughs> as an enrichment trip. So if anybody uh, watching on RTC that uh, would like to go, contact our office. We can get you the details on that. Um, it's a great trip. We, have, we usually get around 100 kids to go to that. So a uh, real good opportunity for the kids to, to get out of uh, Rochester and, uh, and, and go on a trip over fall break. So, I'll piggyback on Mr. Snyder. Uh, Riddle's doing our uh, annual enrichment to the Indiana State Bureau's and then to the candy factory on October 6th. And all students grades three through five. And Mr. Goss and Mrs. Schwenk will be taking that on. And so we've got that going as well. Oh, and speaking of Mrs. Schwenk. She stood out in the hot sun for, I don't know, what year does this make? Do you know, Tom, how many years she's oh, done it? Brock was in it, so it's been over 25, 26 oh my years. Goodness. We're dancing at the Trail of Courage, and she had more than 50 students. 63. Said, wow. And coordinating all of that and donated her 
for Sunday afternoon to go do that. And that's a lot of hard work coordinating all of that. And she had a great photographer there with her. And, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> dedicated, dedicated. You can see the picture. Any other business? In that case, we'll consider the meeting adjourned. <clears throat>